Hi, I'm Bruce Jennings of the Yuseko Shorikai, which is dedicated to the preservation of the teaching of the late James and Tosi, and also the Martial Art Collective Society, which is an organization formed by myself and several other martial artists <coughs> to help preserve the arts, whether they be Japanese, Okinawan, Chinese, Filipino, Indonesian arts, Korean arts, and, and so on. The <coughs> purpose of this tape is to introduce you to a series of concepts and theories which deal much more abstract than what has done be, than what's been done before. This deals with what we call um, manipulation of subconscious mind. First principles I'm going to deal with is what we call the four wall concepts theories. The name of the series of tapes uh, is Koshuru no Kenza, which basically refers to uh, wisdom and movement, but also it deals with uh, magic. Koshiru has been said by many people, it looks magical. We're going to attempt to explain some of this to you. Remember this as well, that as we go through the tape, and as you learn from this, pick up some of the concepts and theories, but try to understand what these really deal with. Now watch. What we're dealing with in this tape, <coughs> four wall concept, and also a principle called structure. Let me first of all explain to you what this is. Four wall concept is dealing with our need for balance within our environment. If that balance is taken away somehow, or if it is played with or distorted, we lose a certain amount of our uh, natural abilities to remain natural. Therefore, we might not be able to maybe manipulate body motion or, or use body motion properly. Uh, we might lack power in whatever we seek to do. We also might lack focus. In combat, the one thing you want to be able to do with an opponent is to eliminate their abilities to, one, have focus, two, have balance or base, three, you want to be able to take away their mental, spiritual, and physical abilities to gain any type of momentum towards a, a, a throw or a strike or a hit. Four wall concept, the reason for the term, <clears throat> is because we do, as humans, we seek to uh, find areas uh, of comfort. A good example of this would probably be in the way certain people live. There's a Chinese uh, practice called feng shui, or feng shui, which is a way to basically negotiate things within a house to create positive, what they would say, positive chi or ki. Uh, if you create distortions within a home, you also create mental unrest. And this is, this is understandable. Uh, some people need a clean environment to exist. Some people want flow or proper flow to take place. Well, four wall concept in a way is the same thing. If you had to exist within a, a building or a structure that only had three walls, you would not have the same comfort or the same ability to negotiate your body within that space. You would have less alternatives. Um, if you create a, if you come into a four wall uh, environment, <clears throat> the manipulation of an object the manipulation of a center, or the manipulation of where someone would think they had center, but also have a tendency to distort that and make them uncomfortable. The term structure. Structure is uh, that concept, which we'll deal with, has to do with the way an individual would place themselves in a state of reality. The difference between reality and illusion there really isn't that much difference. However, there's a uh, marked difference when it comes to their ability to respond or maneuver or negotiate space. When we study Koshiru, the idea is we want to be able to look at things more than the way we perceive them at the moment. We want to be able to reach into our bag of tricks and reach deeply and find more and more about what it is that we perceive we know. Four wall concept is to renegotiate space, to implement 
timing and to create a state of uneasiness in an opponent's subconscious mind. Now you notice I'm saying subconscious, I'm not saying conscious mind. When we think in terms of things consciously, then what we do is we can find and negotiate uh, or come up with different answers to solve a problem. But when you manipulate the subconscious mind, the body does things naturally. And if the body has to renegotiate naturally, but in a distorted way, you have just countered your opponent's ability to exist in a combative manner with you. Um, what I'm going to do is show you some of the, the, the ideas of this. And first, what I'll do is explain about the four walls. If I was teaching a class and say a seminar. One thing you would see is you would see that people would have a tendency to sit around the instructor in a perfectly symmetrical way. When I say symmetrical way, meaning that they will negotiate the space between each other, which will almost be the same space. The person on the far point on both ends of the, the uh, grouping of people would probably negotiate their space the same amount of distance between themselves and the walls. It will circle around the person that is centered. Also, if the person that is giving a speech or a lecture or a class told them to get up, whoever he is centered with will be the first person in that group of people to move. This you can relate to in, in uh, masses of people that come together, but you can also look at it when it comes to the, the physical anatomy of one person moving. When you determine where a point of reference is within a group of people or within the anatomy of, a, of an opponent, you can then know what, as, what part of their anatomy to manipulate subconsciously to throw the rest of the body off. Um, these things you must learn to watch, observe. People follow the environment. Um, I was discussing something a while in a, uh, a similar situation with uh, a gentleman who took me to an airport. And I was telling how we are habitual and we all negotiate with naturally within a, within a walled environment. And <clears throat> we were watching people getting off the plane. Over on one side of the plane, or I mean on, on the, the gateway is, you have where the people side over the tickets and, and this. Well, anyway, it was kind of an obstructed area here. Over on this side, everybody was seated. <clears throat> so you had more of an open space. But what I pointed out to the individual is that the natural response of the body is, is to turn away from the block area and view what is over here, which you have more negotiation with more space. Everybody got off the plane. They took one step when they were from where the gateway is to where the, the airport terminal was. Their right hand, their head, you would right away to the right. Every single person. They naturally ignored this and they paid attention to this. So when they viewed what was out in front, they right away shifted their head this way. This is the same thing that takes place in combat if somebody wishes to strike, hit, or attack. If you can study these things and understand these things, you can manipulate an opponent when it comes to kumite. You could possibly correct a student when it comes to doing kata if you understand where their wall concept or ideas of, of four walls are. Uh, an example, someone throwing a punch. I'm going to let him throw a punch at me slowly. I'm not going to do anything to block. But what I want you to do is you're, you're going to view, or I'm going to view, the space here which he needs to hit. Now, a couple of things have taken place. One is by him standing the way he has. Now, I have not told him how to do this. But his hips have naturally negotiated the space that he has here. This side of the body, this elbow is freer, and it's not as free as this one as far as manipulation and movement. Now partially it's because he wants to hit, but the other reason is because he has more freedom here. He's adjusting to the more space that he has in the room. Now as he strikes, what I want to do is view all of the space and distance it takes for him to hit. Okay? This is important. Any place that I cut into that four wall concept to create a triangular room to him will throw him off slightly. Now right now his target is here, so as he's striking again, we'll let him come through. Now, if he starts to strike again, and I just move to here, what's happening is there's compression on his back hip. 
That compression takes place, number one, is because the left hand, as it was trying to draw back, compresses itself further into the shoulder. But what did it? Was it the left hand is because I moved the triangle? Or is it because of the fact I allow, allow the triangulation to take place with this corner in the room? That corner in the room is part of my triangulation to here. Okay, my other point is here, which causes compression here within the spine. Now, I know it doesn't seem like much, but it is. What's really going on is subconsciously, his body will acquiesce to that corner. Now, an example of this, if he's going to strike again, but this time I'm here, he'll line up his body in more of a neutral plane. This part of the anatomy is that it's turned out. Why? It's because he's now in a squared room. He's more comfortable. So, because he is comfortable, now what I want to do is I want to tighten that up. So how I must do that is very simple. Subconsciously, I can manipulate, create the same problem he has here. As he goes to punch, I stick this leg out. This leg comes out, what it does is it causes a little bit more compression to here. So my triangulation as far as space is here to here. So what's happened to him now, he's, he's adjusted in this direction. And these, are, these are slight, subtle things. It might not have that big of an effect on an opponent as far as throwing a ball, but it will as far as your counter and your repositioning for him to throw a secondary strike or hit. The objective of Kosho is to become magical. So if my opponent is here and I'm aware of the walls, and uh, since it goes to hit, if I'm adjusting, what I'm doing here is taking my opponent and bringing his movement back slightly. The hit is here with a strike with a throw. If he's going to strike and I step to here, what I'm doing now is changing the gate to this direction. So I can create again three walls. If you look at where my left, left leg is, as he goes to move, I cut to here. That's going to cause a compression of the lower back. Okay? So he has to negotiate again with that space where I'm at. And you notice how much strength I'm using right now. So I'm using it. Sense it. So as this man goes to strike, I cut this wall. So now I'm giving him three walls. I want to straighten him up. What I do is I just go back and give him four walls again. He moves again, three. He moves again, four. Moves again, three. Okay, so what I'm doing now in relationship to my opponent, I'm messing with their idea of what is comfortable and what is not. Where he's at right now, he will acquiesce naturally to his, his weight, my position, and posture. Remember this too, that you will negotiate your balance and your weight to those walls and to that environment. Right now, he has built a natural security in between my hip, rotation to here and here. This is a plane of physical motion that I call it. We've both adjusted to the walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand behind my back wall. As he goes to hit, what that does is that stretches him out. Now I'm going to take place in the other wall. He moves, I create a triangle. So what you're doing is you're negotiating with their body to move naturally and to find their balance points. Now watch. When you have, if you study history, and if you study combat and warfare, you will also understand that many wars and many battles were won, not so much because the opposing general knew how to manipulate an army through the physical manipulation of an army, but because the opposing general knew how to manipulate the environment, which allowed that army to feel secure. You take away the security of physical motion and movement and the ability to move, or even if it's an illusion, you take away one's spirit. An example of that is uh, Julius Caesar who uh, fought the Gauls. He showed up with a, a, a force or an army which was half the size of his opposing army. He, he did something that was very unorthodox, but actually something that was genius. He actually divided his own forces, had one, of, one and a half of his army uh, go behind where the Gauls were. Now, the opposing army could have crushed Caesar. He could have crushed both sides, actually. But what he did is he manipulated the areas around by creating multiple fires within the environment. Now, of course, the, the thinking is from the strategists that it made the Gauls think that the Romans were greater in number by having campfires. Was it that or was it the fact that when 
the Gauls first lined up their troops and their army in relationship to Caesar, that they also lined themselves up within an area of mountains, rivers, creeks, and made their own army and their own mass comfortable. <laughs> if you put a mountain range in between troops of an army, you weaken them. If you re manipulate that environment, you weaken them. Examples of that would be Custer. When his uh, Seventh Cavalry were divided, they weren't divided just by um, giving out orders, but they had mountain ranges and rivers that, that divided their forces. Could it be that those things made the, created an insecure feeling within the troops? The physical body does the same thing. If you have someone that is sitting somewhere, or say talking to you, and you were to place an object close to part of their anatomy, you will find that they will become very uneasy and uncomfortable with that. It is learning to put objects in places to create a physical movement subconsciously. <clears throat> and to be able to manipulate that at will is where your magic comes in. Examples, that when people fight and hit, they will also negotiate the four walls are not just what is negotiated from the observation of, of, of objects, but it is also the touch and the feeling of objects, or the uh, appearance that you might touch or feel. These are things that you want to pay attention to as well. Examples of this would be, if I'm blocking a man, he throws a punch, as soon as I block that arm, his body will acquiesce and pay attention to that the, the force that I threw the block and the hit. His body will naturally, subconsciously adjust to that pressure and that touch. Also what I'm doing is I'm creating also a different state within him to where he's also going to kick in the adrenals. This man's going to hit differently. Now, if he expected that response, his body subconsciously is going to adjust to it. However, if he goes to punch, I go, that is going to throw his body and his mind and everything all differently again. He was expecting a hard strike, but it did not take place. What happens within the anatomy from there? You're going to get a different response from the secondary strike or from the hit. So everything's going to be a lot different. Vary your movement, vary your strikes, vary your distance. In doing so, if you're going to change your own body structure. For a wall concept, remember this, when you walk into a room, your body, right away, first thing you do is you see everything there within the room. Your brain picks up those things and your body adjusts to that room or that space. When someone is hitting, they're doing the same thing. Problem, you in the martial arts that practice blocking or that practice hitting, are you not setting your opponent up to throw the next movement even harder? If my opponent's throwing a punch and I step here, his eyes right away are, are, are looking right where his next target's going. Was it the fact that he's looking at me do this or was it the fact that I move which allowed his eyes to track and allowed the rest of the anatomy to come in. So what I'm really doing is contributing to this guy's power. He goes to hit, and I go, I'm going to contribute. He goes to hit, and I go, he's not sure how he's going to manipulate his, his movement now. Why? It's because I did the opposite of what his subconscious brain thought. Four walls became three instantly. He goes to hit, it's a strike, but I'm back here now. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating almost where those walls are coming in and back. Now what that's doing to his body, his body is not sure where to go. So ways that you can practice this, break up the planes of what I call the planes of reality to an opponent. If his visual plane is here and I step here, I'm actually training his body to readjust. So I might want to do that, but then I'm here. What that does to him is this. It throws his body off to where he can't track naturally. So subconsciously, now what's happening is I'm dominating him. Problem, I've touched his arm. Four walls again. His body, his natural subconscious state is going to adjust to that touch. What happens? Learn to change the touch. Therefore, now learn to tilt the rule. He moves, I do this. All I did was took the pinky and I moved it upward, which caused his body to move. Remember, that is touch. I'm now, right now, I've got my arm on his. His body and his weight will become dependent on that arm. He goes to hit, 
What I'm doing is changing the, the touch with the yarn. This time I'm just moving it slightly to here, which shows the man off here. Man strikes. What I'm doing is, what, what did it feel like? No, I just felt like um, I wanted to hit something and it's gone, but I thought it was still going to be there, so my body overthrew itself out and I couldn't adjust to your movement. Now, the reason I'm asking him this to explain this to you is so that you can understand. This is difficult to do on tape. That's right. Now, right now, I'm, I'm barely touching him with my elbow. Okay, he goes to move again. I, I create a little bit of a heavier touch here on the pack. This time I do this. I'm touching right here at the bottom of his arm. As he goes to move again, I, if I just touch that one knuckle, that's going to also throw him off. Now, what's happening is his weight is adjusting to that touch. Now, his body can ignore that and hit, but it can't because also what I'm doing is manipulating space. He goes, if he goes to readjust his hit right now, which he'll do naturally based upon that finger, based upon the one I'm at, and based, right, and based upon this structure. He goes to move again, but this time I'm here, behind his back. He did not expect that. What did that feel like? <laughs> I thought that your hand was going to be there to resist, and you moved it, and then my body took out forward. Four walls, four walls is creating an illusion. Someone adjusts always to what is comfortable to them. The idea is you take that away, give them three walls. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some various different things to, to Shannon Kelly, and then I'm going to have him explain what it felt like, okay? I'm going to be using, like I said, using four wall concept. He moves, what does it feel like? My eye didn't drag me. It went left, right, and I didn't know where to align my... What, what, what I did there is I moved the lower base. As I moved the lower base, the subconscious picked it up. His anatomy moved to correct itself with that. A good example of this would be there is a visual plane problem that people have when they have what they call floaters. That is when something in the eye moves across the eye. Your attention goes to that floater, and then you forget what you're really looking at. It's the same thing. So what I did move the lower base, the upper base became distorted. Now, remember, right now he's touching this. That's his, that's his reality. So what I want to do is create an illusion. So as he goes to hit, and what I'm doing there is touching the back of the head. Because his body was coming forward, because I touched here, he again had to readjust, to the, he had to readjust his weight to the back. What did that feel like? I thought you were going to keep this pressure here, and when you took it away, my body came forward. And on this touch, was stop you from pushing myself forward, so I couldn't come back up. Fine. Yeah, what's that feel like? Hmm. Again, I thought you were going to be here. As I'm moving, right about here, I couldn't adjust to your body shifting. So I'm over here, almost like I'm lined up with you here, but here over here. Okay, right. Okay. Now, what's happened there is what I've done is I've cramped his, his space here. This would be like walking into a large room that all of a sudden got small. But then what I did is I placed a wall over here. And he's touching now. So that's going to create a lean, okay? So the next thing he's going to do is he's going to compress his weight here as he's going to want to hit here. So now as he does that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it again. So now I'm here. Your principle of concepts of four walls is to make someone uncomfortable. Right now, I'm barely touching his arm. Actually, he's seeking to touch my finger. Yeah. And the reason his body's seeking that is because that's the only thing that he has to base any type of reality to. Now, what's happening is he goes to strike again. What I'm doing is I'm manipulating his weight back, but what did it? Was it my hand that did it? Or was the fact that my knee came on the back? Partially it was my knee. By doing that, his visual plane saw his weight adjusting to that. He goes to move again. This time I'm moving, and what did that feel like? I thought you were gonna, I saw your knee move, I thought you were going to come back, and it felt like it pulled me forward. Because I'm still wanting to push off this, but you're not giving any resistance, so I'm, I'm seeking to try to have something to push off of. So I Again, you've got to remember something, which we'll discuss in a minute. Now, where he's at right now is here. His weight is here. What if I weight him in another way? He goes to move again. This time I weighted him on the inside of the arm, which he expected the resistance on the outside of the arm. Right. Which throws them off again. <clears throat> this does not mean necessarily that you're going to actually totally stop anybody in combat, but if the body weight is really committed, 
When you understand the four wall concept, then you can deal with them better. Next, we're gonna discuss four wall concept of Hayoshi, or timing. Now watch. Okay, what we're gonna discuss, we're gonna discuss uh, Hayoshi, or timing. One of the biggest problems I see happening with martial artists is this, is we, we have so many different postures and positions that, that we take on that, that what takes place is that we are actually teaching someone in the street to adjust to us. Four walls, remember, is a concept and deals with, that deals with comfort. We become very comfortable <clears throat> within an environment that we are familiar with. When we are not familiar with an environment, we become uneasy. Our body makes adjustments and movements which are not normal to us. <clears throat> Dilemma. Martial arts today, which I point out to other individuals, is, is not the same as it was. <clears throat> Way back when, 500, 600 years ago, or actually 50 years ago, uh, people in the martial arts, uh, there weren't that many. People in our society did not really recognize the martial arts. Therefore, if a martial artist were to break into a stance or a posture position, our opponent would have less timing uh, on, on their side or his side or her side to adjust uh, because the movement <clears throat> was the same thing as what we're talking about for a wall concept. Uh, when someone broke off into a horse stance that was going to defend themselves to an untrained person who never saw martial arts, they would become very uneasy. Was it because of the martial arts stance was powerful or was it because of the fact that it was not normal in their realm or their reality? Today, everybody is doing martial arts. I mean, everybody in our culture has seen martial arts. They have not practiced martial arts. They've seen uh, movies. <clears throat> They've seen some form of media which portrays a person into a stance in a posture or position. Today, if someone was walking down the street and walked into somebody and that person got off in a martial art pose or posture, it wouldn't mean anything to anybody. Their body would acquiesce to that posture immediately. No problem. Basically, <clears throat> the martial arts today all work in within the realm of four walls. Our society is very comfortable with martial arts. So let me ask you this. Do martial arts exist? I don't think so. Martial arts was something that uh, good martial arts could, could conceal their movement. They were scientific in their approach. They had the, the arts of fencing behind them. They knew how to be precise, and they also knew how to cloak their movement emotion. <clears throat> so the problem we have today is, to the practitioner, is you cannot get away with slop anymore. You now have to pay attention to precision, to strategies. You have to pay attention to how to negotiate space and timing with a would-be assailant. You have to remain uh, the giver and the presenter of illusions. You have to be magical because the magic has been taken away from the martial artist. That's one reason that in studying martial arts today, you have to even be much better when it comes to your, your abilities to use the technology of strategy. Um, timing is important. Remember, when you create a body motion or movement, you are contributing to the timing of an opponent. When an opponent moves and you react to that movement, if your movement is seen by the opponent, and if your movement is not looked upon as something unnatural, their body will respond to you naturally, and they will probably um, destroy you. So when we're, when we're talking about this kind of thing, the timing involved is what is important. Okay. We respond to movement when we see motion. If my opponent moves and I move right away quickly, I'm right away because of the fact he's not wigged out over the fact that I'm taking a different posture. His body's going to respond, his, his momentum's going to readjust, and his structure's going to readjust to hit me. So if he's going to hit and I go like this, karate pose doesn't hit it, bang. Because way back when, he would, it would have caused hesitation. So what do I have to do? I have to understand the elements of timing of the magician. Not timing of a sloppy practitioner in the martial arts who's going to get into a stance and yell out. I now have to be the magician. So if someone is hitting, and he's doing this, let's say he's doing this slowly, 
I have to understand when it is that I must move. I must move in between these states before my opponent goes into being able to hit. He has to go into what we call a weightless state. Before that, from the subconscious mind level, there's a state called vertigo that he has to go into. And that vertical state is just about the time when I'm going to start moving. That is in between the vertical state and the weightless state. In between those two states, that's when my motion must take place. Not as he's setting up his move. So he's going to hit if I do this. No. But if I'm going to move as he moves, it's going to be this way. He's not going to readjust. So my opponent's going to strike. It's going to be here. I don't want him to see what's going on, that he hit or a strike or a move. So I want his visual plan not to be able to detect movement. And I want to be able to be almost where I want to be. So my opponent hits quickly. I want to be able to be here. My hand again is here. Again, he's going to readjust to that. Now I'm going to ask Sensei, here's my hand, I'm touching. I'm going to ask him to hit me naturally. And you watch the shaking off effect you'll have because my hand's here. Go ahead and hit. He's going to, he's going to readjust to that hand. He goes to move, but if I do this, what I did is cut it across this way. He didn't expect it to slip, so he's here now, okay? So what I want to do again is, like I said, it's in the timing. So this would be inappropriate. He goes to hit. Okay, now here's my touch. He goes to hit. If I repel away from my touch, I'm in trouble, because his body's going to be adjusted naturally. If he hits, I'm here, he hits. This time I go past him. He's, he's adjusting to this. Right now, he's adjusting to this touch. He moves again. I do this. He moves again. Here's the hit. Here's the strikes. All your moves and all your hits have to be based upon, again, finding a, a place within the opponent to where the opponent cannot adjust. Your timing has to be such to where your movement or your physical movement cannot be traced or, or trailed by your opponent. Now, 